What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Datadash and today is September 11th of 2020. Well folks, I hope you are having a fantastic day wherever you are. And in today's video, I wanna do a deep dive on the broader space of oracles within the cryptocurrency space. I'm talking plays like Chainlink that you're probably well familiar with, emerging players like Band Protocol, RLC, as well as Teller, and the broader kind of narrative of the oracle space, where we're heading, and when we expect to see kind of the next wave of the bull cycle for this sector of the crypto space. So we're gonna be diving into all this and more right after our quick sponsor. Our sponsor for today's episode is Bitpanda Pro. If you're on the hunt for a proven, trustworthy exchange in Europe to trade your crypto, then I recommend taking a look at Bitpanda. If you're just getting started, many people refer to Bitpanda as the European Coinbase, so it can be a great place to start in getting your first crypto positions. With over five years of experience serving the industry by offering easy and secure access to digital currencies, Bitpanda has really earned its reputation. Check out the link down below in the description for more information. Alrighty, everyone. So before we dive into a lot of the extensive data pieces that we have here in regards to analyzing price across this entire sector of the crypto space, I think it's very important that we understand why oracles right here right now are kind of a centerpiece topic. You know, many of you probably noticed if you take a look at the DeFi list uh, that CoinMarketCap created in this case, Chainlink is placed right at the top at around $4.2 billion right now in valuation. It's one of the largest cryptocurrencies out there. And it's grown a lot since 2019 and 2020, but it's not the only one. There's a variety of other plays here that we'll talk about, such as Band Protocol. We're going to talk about RLC, Teller, all these different oracles. Again, sometimes taking different approaches comparative to one another and trying to provide basically one valuable thing, and that is trust data feeds where we're able to minimize trust as much as possible connecting to the real world and bringing in real world data into siloed blockchains now i know the blockchains aren't really seen as siloed in this case right they are decentralized uh, they are uh, again uh, censorship resistant in some capacities if you're talking about networks like bitcoin and ethereum but keeping this in mind, it's important to note that you know on a platform like Ethereum or all these other enterprise blockchains or the platforms where DeFi is thriving, they need to be able to pull in from real world information. And the Ethereum network itself, as well as most other blockchains, cannot do this. So they need something that's going to be able to kind of relay and transit um, that information into smart contracts that are aimed at being as trustless as possible. Okay, so we've gotten that out of the way. If you listen to me ramble, you're going to get to see the price action and the analysis in the market here. Let's go ahead and just talk about the granddaddy, and that is Chainlink. This is the largest cryptocurrency out there on the market for oracles. And I want to go ahead and just take some broad analysis here when we're talking about Chainlink and other cryptocurrency plays. What's interesting about Chainlink's price is that there is a lot of repetition in this case, uh, especially here on this longer term kind of analysis or long term time frame. You know, most people are looking at the hourly or the minute chart and you know maybe a, a week's worth of price action, and that's going to really leave you in a bad spot if you're trying to kind of spot these uh, you know five, ten x run ups in valuation. Okay, so it's important to take a look back at Chainlink and see what we're seeing in a similar sense here with price action right now. We've obviously been in a bit of a pullback here uh, from bottom to uh, top here we had more than a 50 percent pullback and valuations uh, a ten dollar decline here from the peak down towards around nine dollars and i want to go ahead and talk a little bit about you know what we can expect and i kind of analyze from this price action what we've seen historically so taking a look back at chain link here Chainlink's first significant rally, um, outside of say maybe some of the previous price action it had before, it obviously did great since its ICO, but you can see here in April of 2019, towards the end of April here, price was trading around 43, 44 cents in this case. And by the end of this cycle, when we actually went to the top here, so again from April, late April, really starting off really here in May, to the end of June, stepping into July, we had a 10x in price. Chainlink went all the way up to $4.60. But roughly speaking, again, depending on your numbers used here at the bottom, right, you're generally talking about a 1,000% uh, multiple in this case from bottom to top. Okay, So that's fantastic to see. It's great price action. And then after that, we had something very significant happen. Whereas a lot of people, again, in crypto, again, like to chase the hype. For a long time, we actually went sideways. We consolidated. We had multiple times where we went from around a dollar fifty up here to four dollars and sixty cents again, and up here towards five dollars. But generally, if we're going to go ahead and use our general lines of support and resistance again, just naked trading here, we're not using any crazy indicators. We're just looking at price. We can see here that it pushed sideways for about a year, right? Uh, so basically, again, you can go ahead from the entry here 
right, outward towards here, you're talking about around 365 days, right, a little bit more than that expanding out here. And we can see that again, Chainlink was pushing sideways for a year. So all the gains came in here, right? And you could say, well, I know you could trade it in here. That's true. But the real cycle that we want to ride is back here, right? So if you miss this, you want to focus on, okay, what am I going to look for in the next cycle? Well, we can see here that once we came up here and we were able to make this resistance support, we kicked off the next cycle. And after that as well, again, another great rally here. We went from around $4.50 all the way up towards around $20. Great rally if you can get it, right? More than a 4X in this case. So keeping this in mind, right, this was the secondary cycle that we had. And now we have to look for what similarities we're finding this time around that we found last time. Well, last time we had a mid-cycle top here, came down, pulled back a little bit, went from around $1.40, $1.50, down towards around 90 cents to a dollar, right? And then we rallied up for a second portion. Interestingly enough, we had the exact same thing happen here. It doesn't tend that things just go straight up. We had a nice rally here, we pulled back a bit, and we continued the cycle. And interestingly enough, isn't it ironic that when we had the dip here, uh, back in September where the market was starting to panic, and again, altcoins started to decline very dramatically just about a week ago, we came down to make support on that. And that's exactly what we did. Now, some people would say, oh, look, I, I missed the dip opportunity, I didn't buy at the right price, and oh, I'm gonna miss out. And quite frankly, I don't think so. As much as I like Chainlink, it was my number one pick for 2019, guys. We've been talking about this in the Dash report. We've been talking about it on the channel as well. If you guys want to support me as well, you can always check out the Dash report newsletter um, in the description. But this is basically something we've been talking about for a long time. And now it's just a matter of seeing if history is going to repeat itself. And it's very likely that it's going to repeat itself to some capacity. It's going to push sideways, right? And it's going to generally start setting in maybe some lower uh, lower highs and lower lows, having a first nice actual general pullback. Maybe it'll range through here like it did back here. So maybe there'll be some trade opportunities from nine to 20 bucks, you know, to basically more than double your money. Again, not bad opportunities there, but I would say for the vast majority of you out there, the thing you should be focusing on is, yes, finding a way to kind of maybe trade these short-term opportunities, but really focusing on these next cycle rallies, trying to pick up the bottom before we escape and starting to rally up here and really be able to trade those massive multiples. Or if you want to play it safer, waiting until we get a confirmation that we're above the all-time highs, we've made support on that resistance, and then we're going to move higher. Now, you'll see here, if you take a look at these lines, I don't actually just have these lines arbitrarily here, these kind of ranges and the time frame for it. I actually have a shorter set of lines here. And this is something that is gonna be probably pretty positive for those who are holding Chainlink. I believe that sometime in Q1 of 2021, this is when we're gonna see a breakout above this line again. And we're gonna continue the cycle here. And I'll continue to build on that as we go throughout the video, why I believe that time range. Taking a look here at the BTC chart, again, we've been analyzing the Bitcoin chart for a very long period of time, and it just continued to get more and more bullish. We had an ascending triangle with higher lows, consistent line, uh, a consistent line of resistance here. We broke out higher, then came back down, kind of tested back towards this range, made it support multiple times, right? Again, previous resistance becoming support here at these different price ranges, continuing to set higher lows, higher highs, breaking out of these two points of resistance, which formed another uh, tip of the wedge here and then continuing for the next cycle. But just taking a look here, right, guys, we obviously, again, we talked about this. This has been in the newsletter and stuff for a long time. I want to go ahead and turn off the drawings here and just take a look at this chart here, right? Does this look, whether you're looking at the logarithmic chart or the standard chart, does it look like it's gone through its final correction? It, does it tend to be that when you have these larger corrections in Chainlink that, you know, it's just going to be a couple of days like this? Well, maybe as we're going up here in the cycle, but in most cases, when we start to have these dramatic corrections, right, when we start to get higher percentage points, it's usually a longer term pullback. And you can, again, see this on the logarithmic chart. We've seen this over here. We have a longer term pullback over here and a long term pullback over here. This is something that's probably going to take a little while. That's not me being, again, bearish on Chainlink. It just means that it's probably not where you want to put your capital to work right now. Uh, personally, just in my opinion, again, I don't have a massive position anymore in Chainlink because of this, right? And the last thing here, taking a look at the USD uh, chart here, right? We can take a look at Chainlink here over a long-term time frame. 
do uh, you know again as you all know I, I try not to look at indicators too much but the one thing I do like to use is the SMS indicator it's our aggregate indicator that was created by Sandeep one of our community members who worked together on this a while back and it basically uh, combines the squeeze momentum indicator the um, the MACD and also the stochastic RSI and taking a look at the weekly time frame we can get some really good visuals here right when we cross below right basically when we go down to uh, below three points so to two to zero points in this case where it flips red here uh, we can see each time when we flipped red that it tends to be that the bear market does prolong for a little bit longer especially back here it at least takes a couple of weeks here before we really start to find a base and a bottom here for chain link so again, not to say that there's not going to be any trading opportunities, that there's not going to be any opportunities to maybe swing this in between. I like those opportunities as well, but I want to go ahead and keep it relatively simple here and, and talk about, you know, like, you know, how long did it take until we really got that next move, right? It was 21 weeks here, right? Along with that as well, taking a look at this one here, even when we made it back up to the highs here, it was 33 weeks to get it back up to the highs and then we sold off, right? So again, that's a very valuable thing to look at, not just top to bottom here as well. Right. Again, those swing opportunities can be good and valuable. But anyways, that's my analysis on Chainlink here. Just to provide some context here, the broad kind of analysis here would be that we would continue to come down and retest the support level, maybe even have some cycle rallies here where we you know, continue to go through. And then eventually, right, we'll start to build up here. I kind of drew my lines a little bit too long, but basically coming up, coming down, and then continuing higher for Chainlink, right? So again, move this a little bit over here in this case. Just again, I'm not saying this is exactly the price it's gonna move, but I believe it's gonna range through here, right? Come through those kind of uh, mid ranges here for the cycle range from support to resistance, it tends to happen a lot. Um, and you don't have enough buyers to come through and then it comes back down to support, right? That's what generally what we're gonna be looking for here. Now, taking a look at some of the other Oracle plays, I wanna start by taking a look at RLC. And I actually don't wanna dive specifically into RLC's price action, um, or iExec RLC, this is one of the Oracle plays that's a smaller cap in the market. I wanna dive into the ratios here. Now, as you all know, I like to focus in on ratios and generally talk a bit about, you know, like the opportunity between cycling between these plays. So if you wanna stay within the Oracle space long-term, uh, you know, and, and not really try to trade in and out of the market to tether or you know major cryptos like Bitcoin or Ethereum. It's probably best that you at least focus on the ratios to know which oracles you should be positioned in. And the ratios can give us a lot of valuable information. Just taking a look here at this chart here, guys. We've been able to trade. Uh, we traded the last trade here back in uh, June through July. It was one of our best plays ever in the newsletter, where we bought RLC back in this lower range here. And we traded it through and we're able to basically predict the general top range here for RLC. So again, we're going to be doing something similar to this. Basically, just to explain this, if you don't know what this is, I'm basically taking RLC's price action and dividing it by link. The BTC here, you have to type the BTC because you're getting the BTC pair for these. It's the most liquid and long-term price range you have. But the BTCs cancel each other out, so don't worry about that. As some people, I have that misconception. This is giving us a great ratio here where we're able, in this case, to see which one is outperforming one another. And when this is going up, it means RLC is doing better than Chainlink. It doesn't mean that it's going up in valuation, it just means that maybe it's losing less to Chainlink. Uh, it's just generally that better that you're positioned in here. You'll be able to basically, from here to here, you're able to acquire, if, if it were to go from this range to this range, you'd be able to more than double your link position if you went from RLC in that time period and then swap back into Chainlink there, right? So again, picture it in this case where you cut out your bias and you're just focusing it on opportunities here. So generally speaking, again, we're shooting for something a little bit above a $100 range here. And between these two time frames, it tends to be, if we've taken a look at the rallies in the past for these uh, market pairs, I don't know why they're slightly off here, you can see, generally speaking, it's a little bit less than 100 days for most of these cycles. So again, keep in mind that we're probably going to be getting something that's probably around 100 days in this case, or similar to what we've seen in the past. Again, you can't see this stuff on the hourly or the daily time frame, um, or at least if you're zoomed in on the daily time frame, right? So I am taking a look at the daily time frame, but you see my point here, right? You can't be looking at a day's worth of price action or a week's worth of price action. You got to look at these kind of daily, weekly, and monthly charts to really get an idea of what's going on. Band protocol. Band protocol is one of the few that, again, I'm, I'm not really bearish on the fundamentals of band, but I think it's a little too overextended. This one had a, a lot of hype coming into it with the Binance listing. And I think in this case, we've seen historically 
that not only does ban have much more significant corrections than what we've already seen here, right? Around 56% would be more kind of in line with what we've seen in the past here. Um, in regards to these shorter corrections. But what I think we're going to see here is we're talking about a longer time frame horizon. And again, I will get to this point here when I when I generally talk about this um, position of a longer term correction. We can see here the longer term one was around 75%, right? This big even percentage range in this case, cutting off three fourths of valuation. And we saw that happened here back in September 2019 into January. So again, very, very important here to keep in mind with band protocol. Um, again, I think that in this case as well, we've not only got a decent understanding of where the percentage range is going to be, but to keep in mind that it's going to be a minimum of 130 days here. Now, interestingly enough, if you keep in mind this range of 130 days, come down to this price range down here, it actually looks like it could very well fit in here, as well as maybe even expand out here towards our target range of Q1. So again, just keeping in mind somewhere in that ballpark range is what we're going to be looking for. And of course, there's RLC's price action I wanted to talk about as well. RLC looks like it's gone through the majority of its correction here, but again, still is probably going to push sideways here and make key support on historic resistance here, right? Again, this is way down price multiple times here and here, and now it's a matter of making the support so it can move higher against Bitcoin. Now, the final kind of big kahuna here um, that we want to talk about in the sense of the space before we dive into our massive uh, like an index for oracles is teller now teller is probably one of the smallest plays in the oracle space but it's taking an interesting approach between kind of like proof of work and, and proof of stake in regards to uh, reaching consensus on the network but all in all here right we've seen here that it's had a pretty steady rally here but also a pretty substantial correction cutting down more than 50 percent of its gains ever since it got the listing on binance back in late august and in this case again I think that we're going to continue to push sideways. So don't feel like, you know, as you're seeing it starting to bounce up, you're like, oh, I didn't get it at $26 at 34 Should I buy it now? Don't feel the need to FOMO, guys. This is probably going to push sideways for a bit, just like most other plays. But again, I think all of these plays have a good chance at being a substantial set of players or oracles in the industry, right? I really am not favorably fundamental towards one end to the other at this point. And I think that's not a smart move to have, like, you know, to just be favorable to one. I, I'm, I care about what price is telling me, what the market's telling me. Okay. So let's go ahead and talk about probably the most important chart here. All right. You might be positioned in chain, like you might be positioned in band, teller, RLC. It doesn't matter. I want to go ahead and talk about what everyone should be watching. And that is the custom index that we built of RLC BTC plus link BTC plus band BTC. And this is going to give us a very good broad analysis of how oracles are performing okay so again we've put these in parentheses here divided by three these values together are going to be uh, divided by uh, three here in this case giving us a nice index weight of how these are performing if we take a look at the daily here right this gives us a very clear picture of what's likely going to happen we've had a very very substantial rally in oracles I think we've had a phenomenal set of performance here for these plays. And again, I don't think that these are going to drop, you know, anywhere down here by any means. Some people say, oh, the Oracle top is in, ah, oh, the craze is over. No, I not only think that there's still a lot more craze to happen, so in the sense of speculation, but there's also as well a lot of developments as well with DeFi, with enterprise blockchain, where Oracles are going to play a fundamental role. And this is just going to become more and more relevant on a fundamental basis. So. What's my general point here? If we can take a look into the two previous highs here, we can get a nice line of resistance here towards Chainlink, or excuse me, Chainlink chart, the uh, index for oracles here. And interestingly enough, if we take the 50% plus range here, right, for a 50% pullback across the industry, we can see that it leads us right on, as you probably guessed it, previous resistance. Turning previous resistance into new support is the new objective here for the oracle space. And what's nice about this is this means that we're still going to get more of a discount than where we're already at right now, even more than where it was back here, most likely. And as it treads sideways in this case, we're going to eventually look for it to pop out above this line of resistance, giving us the go sign that oracles are the plays to be in, that the momentum has come back to the market. That's what we're looking for. And this is, again, how I go about analyzing markets, guys. You all know it if you've been following me. Um, you know, the, the really interesting thing is that it tends to be that the simplest of technical analysis on the longer term time frames 
basically the opposite of what other people are doing where they're over analyzing the market using 10 different indicators uh you know maybe looking at the hourly chart and i don't mean to to just call out anyone in that case and stuff who knows maybe you guys do well doing that if if, if you're one of those traders but i think most of you watching know me and you know my style and many of you probably fit into that category where you're looking at percentage decline percentage gain you're looking at you know general trend lines in this case for resistance and support you're looking at what price is telling you because the more and more indicators you put in, the more complexity, the more debating on, oh, this project is more worth the other one fundamentally, and it's got a better chance, and it's not, you're going to get caught in the noise. And you're going to miss out on the substantial opportunities that are laying right in front of you in the market. I've learned this over the last few years. It's been one of the, the truest things that I've come to learn. And the great thing is, you don't have to stress about the day-to-day -day moves. And you can focus on knowing that, okay, I know that there is a fundamental narrative here that oracles are going to continue to grow in the cryptocurrency space. That's my fundamental one. Technicals, the only kind of technicals I'm looking at are things like the SMS indicator. I keep my technicals small, if anything. In this case, right now they're signaling bearish. We'll wait until they turn bullish. And the third thing is price. And price here is giving us a very clear picture. And until it turns bullish, I can't make any substantial positions. So that's the too long, did not read version. We're going to be expecting in some time of Q1 of 2021 that oracles are going to be back in action. That's my general take. And I'd love to hear from you guys down below in the comments. But if you're interested in more kind of analysis like this, you know, I try to, to, to try to provide as much kind of content on here and stuff, doing these kind of deep dives and stuff. But if you like this kind of stuff, whether it's for cryptocurrency markets or other markets, you can always check out the newsletter, the Dash Report, again, down below in the description. It's a great way to support the channel and what I do. But outside of this, well, if you can't support the Dash Report, along with that as well, you can always check out Digifox, my smart wallet, and uh, we have a link for that down below in the description. But it's basically going to allow you to buy basically any of the Oracle plays that we just talked about. Teller, RLC, um, Chainlink, Band Protocol, all ERC20 tokens you can get access to straight within the Digifo uh, Digifox wallet. So if you're interested in getting access to these plays at relatively good fees, lower than platforms like Coinbase and other mainstream cryptocurrency apps, then check out Digifox. It's a great way to support the channel. Anyways, everyone, I hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are. If you like this video, please drop a like, consider subscribing, and hitting the bell icon if you haven't already. And I hope, above all, that you guys have a fantastic day wherever you are. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you all in the next video.